I'm on a small island in the middle of the Great Gambia River, about 30 kilometres upstream from the mouth. It's a small island, roughly in the middle of the river, about five kilometres either side, separating this small island from either bank. Very wide river at this point. It was first called Andrew Island by the Portuguese when they first colonised here, recognising that if you had a fort here, you could have cannon that fired both sides and you could control the entire river. But its history is more tragic than just a fort. It was renamed James Island when the British owned it and it was the last stepping off place of slaves before they were sent to the New World. Captured here, put into a dungeon, and walked out onto the open field before being loaded upon slave ships to be taken to their disastrous new life. The most famous slave to have left here is Kunta Kinte, made famous by Alex Haley in his book Roots. Crammed into this small dungeon, fed only through this small window, were hundreds of black Africans leaving their homeland for the last time. The last journey they took was leaving this dungeon, climbing up these stairs, out into the African sunlight for their last time. They were marched in chains. Down these stairs, they gathered here under these baobab trees before being loaded onto ships. Move beyond the historical narrative for a second and think about the human perspective. What would it have been like to be standing on this island looking to the north and the southern shore of the Gambia River having been left in that dungeon for two weeks to weaken yourself so you couldn't mutiny on board the ship. You didn't know where you were going but as that metal collar strangled around your neck as you were forced upon that ship. You knew wherever you're going, it was not going to be good. Move beyond the historical narrative and think of the human context. What the people would have thought as they marched down to that slave yard and onto the ship. In 1767, a young man, about 17, 18 years old, left a hut like this from this place to collect firewood. And he was captured and sold into slavery. His name, Kunta Kinte. And unlike what we thought as kids, he didn't come from a group of heathen hunter-gatherers without any culture. In fact, he came from a very culturally diverse and sophisticated community. Not heathens, they were followers of the God of Abraham. They were Islamic here, and they worshipped, and they had very complex political and economic systems. The two things that the people in this area that didn't have, that made them susceptible to slavery, was gunpowder and a homogeneous political system. This whole area is made up of tribes and kingdoms that were warring and fighting, just like many in Europe were. And slavery wasn't unknown before the Europeans came. Indeed, the fighting between each tribe and kingdom group resulted in slaves being taken. But what the Europeans did when looking for the slaves to feed their colonies is they multiplied the number of people that were taken as slaves many, many times. And here on the Gambia River, it's estimated about half a million slaves passed through James Island, now Kunta Kinte Island, to head to the New World in slavery. But they didn't come from a backwards culture. They came from an advanced culture, worshipping the same God that we all worship. And just over my shoulder here is the lands still worked by the Kinte family. Still farming here. Eight generations from Kunta Kinte coming to nine. Two generations from Alex Haley. This is the human story of slavery. It's not just about huge numbers of nameless people. It's people who lived in these huts, torn away from their lives and their families. And this is Jufre village. If Kunta Kinte was not captured, 
in 1767 and taken to the United States. Alex Haley would not have been brought up there and his grandchildren wouldn't be running around Seattle, Tennessee and New York. They would be here along with the extended family and the matriarch of the Kinte family still lives here and in 1967 Alex Haley came here and met his extended family. A neat 200 years and six generations from when Kunta Kinte was captured and sold into slavery. You know, some say Alex Haley's roots is a work of fiction, not historical narrative. In fact, I'm not going to get into that debate and the reason I'm not going to is because even if that were true, even if his stories were works of fiction, it doesn't detract from the point that many thousands were dragged off into slavery. And for their descendants, who's better off? Those in Virginia, Washington, Freetown, or here in Gambia? Well, I think that's going to go down to the essence of the individual and what they've been able to make with the lot they were given in life. Not that that in any way excludes or reduces the horror and the evils that came with slavery.